Nah, ibu teks tenang. Kita sa serius ke part, serius menita nana. Kamu ke serius untuk dengar kamu kena iya. Serius untuk dengar part sa portion simple. Let's read once again. Ang matukuran na sa tumisay. I encourage you to follow with me sa inyong mga Bibles diha. Whether na sa cellphone, tablet, or actual mga Bible. Let's read Hebrews 1, chapter 1, 1 to 3. Ito lang ilahin ang verse 4. Sa ato na nakatulang. Ang 1 to 4, 1 sentence yun siya. Focusing on verses 1 to 3. And today, we'll focus on verse 3. So let me read sa New King James Conversion. God, who at various times and in various ways, spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by His Son, whom He has appointed heir of all things, through whom also He made the world, who being the brightness of His glory and the express image of His person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty of high. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Let's ask for wisdom. Father, here we are again, asking for your wisdom and understanding as we study your word. Lord, napi ka mga panalangin ka na, magigitong ka lang, para masak ka na, magigitong mga pulong, sa yan na lang mga pag, sa mga sa ginoo, ikaw, ang mga mas may inang, ikaw ang magkatubo to Diyos. Sa wala kami magtuon, sa mula ang usap, ang mga pagtuo, pag-ilang, kaya kanin mo, Diyos. Ikaw sa Pray Father, kaya itong pagpapay kagutuman na kanin, mong inaakamahan, pinag-insahe ka rin, makakonvince nila, pinagi sa Diyos, sa Bulan Espiritu Santo, sa Binong sa Kristo, mga ginang mga nagubas, wala na ilangin ko. Malang angay na simbaho, angay na pasadunggan. Because He is the creator of all. Through Him, God, He created the worlds. He sustained the world. He saved the world. And one day, He will rule all. Father, may you bless us as you study your word. And may you also be glorified. May your praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Ang letter sa Hebrews, nagpresent ka na ito, nagpadayag ka na ito sa pagkawalay sama ni Ginoong sa Kristo. Pagkawalay makatupong sa iyang pagkadiyos. Ang Hebrews, nag-introduce ka na ito kang Kristo sa iyang perfect or unique na nature. Ang iyang sacrifice dito sa cross sa Calvary Alone is effective alang sa kaluwasan sa tanan. His sacrifice alone effective para sa atong kaluwasan. And whose authority in heaven and on earth is without rival. Ang Hebrews, nagtudlo ka na ito, nagpresent ka na ito pag inoong sa Kristo, nga siya adunay gahong o katungod o otoridad sa langit o sa yuta, otoridad na diling matuknan. He is enthroned, the enthroned Lord, worthy of all our honor and worship. Opening verses pa lang, diha na ito ma, ilhan, si Ginoon sa Kristo, kung sagit siya pagkalabaw, mo ng angay, siya lang ang atong masinunggan at simbahon. Kung sagit siya pagkasupreme, We're continuing our study of the supremacy of Jesus Christ. And this is our third part. As we study the opening verses, we learn, and we'll learn, that one of these seven actions in verses 1 to 3, na point sa pagka-Diyos ni Ginoong sa Kristo, pagka-tibuok sa iyang Diyos, kanyang seven supremacies, Ning seven action words dini verses one to three is a proof. Ung nagtudlo kana tung nagpakita 
nga tibok ang pagkadiyos ni Ginoo sa Kristo. Dili siya created being, dili pud siya tao lang. Yes, he is fully man. Tibok ang iyang pagkatao. But he's also fully God. Dili siya half man, half God. Tibok ang iyang pagkatao, tibok pud ang iyang pagkadiyos. That's what's make him unique. Ug maupod na ang kaluwasan exclusive lang diha ni Kristo. We cannot say and why lie na ngon nga kani pod ka Dios makaluwas pod ni siya. Ipakita sa Hebrews ug ato makatanan sa Hebrews. Only Jesus can say unique ang iyang pagkatao ug iyang pagka Dios. Let's continue to study. Now, ang um, original audience ni ini, mga mga Jews, mga Hebrews, na they are tempted to go back to Judaism, uh, but practice o uh, worship, maghalag na po o uh, sacrifices para sila mga sala. O, kung baga mag-lindo na lang silang faith ni Jesus as they uh, ang ay worthy sacrifice tungod sa nagpalibot nga persecution. Lahi, tungod kay culture, nagkakot sila ng culture sa law, sa sacrificial system. Kung morning ang writer si Hebrews, nagpailad yun, nagpresent ni Jesus, He alone, ang iyang sacrifice, enough na para sa kaluwasan. O kining seven ato nakatunan ni Agi karong last three atong katunon nganong siya ang takus ug gamayan ug nganong siya lamang ang makaluwas morning he describe in his continuous study with the supremacy of Jesus Christ we are now in the fifth description in Jesus nagtudlo kanato why he is superior to anyone or anything nganong worthy man siya sa tanan natong pagpasidungo o pagsimba So let's go focus on the verse three, Karon. Na sa sunod ng mga phrases, he is the upholder of all things. This is the fifth description of truth about Jesus Christ: upholder, preserver, upholding all things by the word of his power. Verse three, sa Hebrews. Diyan lang tao na, focus na niya. Another description, ikalima niya siya ng description. Now, this duty of Jesus Christ is very fascinating. Dili lang siya nag-create sa world. Ages, that is, the whole universe. Time and space and matter. Dili lang siya nag-create ni anak. Kundi siya po ang nagsustain ni Ana. Wala lang niya di-create, di lang siya nag-create, di lang siya mo'y inheritor or mag-inherit ni ini, siya po ang nagsustain ni ini. He holds them all together. Not only God created everything through the agency of Christ, Not only did God create everything that exists, makita or di makita, but everything that exists is held together by the same power. Paul said the same thing in Colossians 1.17. In Him, all things hold together, referring to Christ. In Christ, all things hold Hold together. Si Christ, mo'y nag-sustain, mo'y nag-preserve sa tanang mga buta. And the word upholding here means supporting, maintaining. And then, it's also present tense. It's a continuous action. This is a present participle. This text indicates that Jesus is continually holding, upholding all things in the universe by the word of his power. That's how powerful he is. By his word, 
He created all things. He is the instrument that God created the heavens and the earth, the whole universe, the ages. Let's remember Genesis. God said, let there be, and then sa pag-sustain ini, sa pag-maintain ini, by the word of His power, by His word. How powerful Jesus, this is Jesus who maintains, who preserve the world. Imagine kung si Jesus mag go sa pag sa universe. How chaotic it will be. Now, one thing, cosmos, kanang world from the Greek word cosmos, it speaks of order, arranged in order. O ang opposite niya, na mo ng chaos. And God is the God of order. And here, Jesus, nag-uphold sa order. Kung mulit go siya ni Anna, up, by His word only, how powerful. It's a proof that Jesus is God. The deity of Jesus. Mon ang amin ni Chelsea Bacon. Mon ang usas mga bottom line ni Diyos si Cristo. He upholds all things by the word of His power. And it does not simply mean sustain any upholding in Him, but has the sense of active, purposeful control. Ang pag-uphold ni Jesus, all things, has a sense of active, sustaining, with purpose. Now, walay aksidente sa kalibutan gawa ito buta ni Jesus. Even history, history God created time, He upholds the history. Ang history, naanas kamot sa ginoo, o naani padulungan ang history, and we're waiting for that combination sa history, ang iyang pagbali, ang millennium, o ang eternity, padulong niya. Ang history, bilit lang cycle, balik-balik, naway padulungan, naway kinutuban. It's proof here, Jesus is upholding all things, not just the material world, even time and space, because He's the creator of the ages, aeons, and in worlds, they need ages, and He also upholds it by His word. If He sees from doing this, the universe would disintegrate. Imagine the solar system, the galaxies, kung ang orbit o ang gravity let go sa pag-uphold ni Jesus, what a total chaos that will be. Kung sa Earth lang, isuspend ang gravity, kung sa ako na lang. And this is Jesus not just maintaining or sustaining, preserving with a purpose, an active sustaining, active preserving of all things, including history. Even the coronavirus, whether it's man-made or natural, ang Dios itubutan o kasayad ang Dios nini, and He has a purpose for this. Ugnaan ni padulgan, ugnaan siya katuyuan ni ini. Nothing is out of control sa kamot sa Dios. It's clear here. He is upholding all things. There is no accident. Bisa naman itong ma-experience ng accident, di para ka ng accident. Pero para sa Diyos, He is upholding all things. And sa believer, kung saan ni ka kanindot, na comfort, na even if it seems our life here on earth is a chaos, or what I kukot sa itong pinabuhi, salamat sa ginukunatan ni Kristo, God will preserve us until the end. How special man is. Kung si Jesus na ikaw mong preserve sa all things, how much more our life? Ang wisdom sa Diyos, you know, ang iyang gahong, boundless din. Kung iya kinigipakita, pinagi sa iyang pag-govern in the universe. And He does it by the word of His power. Without effort. Without sweat. Everything is held together by the word of His power. 
it speaks, it's done, it's sustained. Ang universe, wala mahitabo, wala ma-pray by accident. Kung di likod ni ma-maintain by accident ng Lord. Kung ang universe di likod mo end by accident, God upholds it. Kung panahon nga iyan ang tapuson sa iyang kababuton, He has the power to do it. Kung gani, iyan ang ipasabot ang unsay na hitabot sa unahan at unsay katapusan. If you read Revelations, and Daniel also, is God speaking, revealing what's in the end, what's come. Kung sa'y mahita mo, sa katapusan panahon. It's Jesus Christ sustaining the universe. The reason nga nung ang world, universe, is a cosmos. Something that is well arranged, that which has order or something arranged harmoniously instead of chaos because Christ is sustaining it, preserving it, upholding it. It is important for the writer, sa Hebrews, to emphasize that Christ's word is powerful and able to do what he determines because para ka natin personally, it's a comfort that kung siya powerful to sustain the universe at ang nakikigang is also powerful to preserve us, his people, the believers, sa panahon siyang pagbali. Or kung on sa may mahitabo nato din sa kalibutan, he will preserve us so that he will take us to his throne, to, to heaven. It's Philippians 1.6 That he which hath begun a good work in you shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. It's a comfort sa tanang magtuto na kung ang Diyos nagsutod na liko, pamuhag sa inyong kinabubi. He will complete His work until the day of Jesus Christ. He will not abandon you. Bisan pa sa kalisod, sa kalibutan, kung ikaw anaanan ni Kristo, ang iyong trabaho, diha sa inyong kinabubi, iyan ang kumpituho na ito ikaw perfect. He will never abandon you. Kung ikaw anak na niya, kung ikaw minto bigaw at nakaginom sa Kristo, even it seems nga lisod ka kinabuhi or inyong kinabuhi, kiyotik pa kayong kinabuhi, He will preserve you until the end. He who began a good work in you shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. He will preserve, sustain you. When Christ begins to work in your heart, He doesn't just begin it and ends it. He hangs onto it. And to the end, kita ta kaniya kaubat sa yung kinariya. Maanang si Jude sa kanang benediction, Jude 24, kutub si katapusan, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, o kinsa may kirefer din ni, verse 25, to the only wise God our Savior, Siya, our God, our Savior, is able to keep us from falling, able to present us faultless before the presence of His glory with exceeding joy. God, Jesus, our Savior, is able to preserve us, uphold us from falling, from presenting us faultless, not to samahan. Iyan yung tanging present sa amahan. Father, money nga akong giluwas, money nga akong i-preserve, i-perfect. O iyan ang buhaton with exceeding joy. Lingang siya joyful, exceeding ang iyang pagkamalipayon, i-present kita iyang work na to sa iyang amahan. He is able to keep us from falling and to present us focus. So it's a comfort to the believer. And if you are not yet a believer, receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior and He will start to work in your life, transform you, and then preserve your life until the present and your faultless to the Father. Jesus Christ can take your life when you give it to Him. 
and he can take you at the end of your life and be sure that you are in God's presence. Because all the way along, he sustains your life in Christ. Ang kinabuhi na dili sustained by Jesus Christ is a chaos. If Christ is not in your life, it's a chaos. And even somebody says, you're a danger to yourself when you are apart from Christ. Again, uh, next, next phrase. Now, when, uh, let's read. When he had by himself purged our sins, it means he is the savior of all. Let's review the seven. The first one is that he is the heir of all things. Then he is the creator of all things. Then, what's next? The brightness of his glory. It means he's the reflection of the Father. Then the express image of his person, the exact representation of God, that is his nature. His nature, his essence, is God. He is not just the radiance of God, the brightness of God, the visible manifestation of God. His being is also God. He is also God in being. Then, he is the upholder of all things. Now, he is the savior of all. When he had by himself purged our sins. What a tremendous statement. All alone, by himself, he purged our sins. The Greek word here, purge, katharismos, translated in I think it's purification, or purge, sa King James. It means both removal and cleansing. Igamit na sa Mark 1.44 or 2 Peter 1.9. Purge or purification sa NIV, it means the removal and cleansing of our sins. He by himself removed and cleansed our sins. Wow. Maoning wa gilaing manluluwas. Nga maoning wa ilaing duulan ang tao. Arong mapasaylo ang sala. Arong makabatunog kaluwasan. Claro, there is a Hebrews. By him, when he had by himself purged our sins, made purification. This means he is the Savior, the only Savior of all. He is not only the ruler or the sustainer of all, he is the Savior of all. Jesus Christ is the Savior. He alone made purification of sins. He alone removed and cleansed, made cleansing for sins. Let's remember sa uh, pag-announce sa pagkatao ni Jesus. Sa, si, si Joseph, ang uh, uh, earthly father ni Jesus, gusto nang buwagan si Mary, tumot kay buntis man. Tungod niya na ang angel nagpakita na ito ni Joseph o nag-ingon ni Joseph, Matthew 1.21 Even sa iyang name, Matthew 1.21, this is the angel talking to the Joseph And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus For he will save his people from their sins The word Jesus Joshua, Yeshua, it means God is salvation. His name alone is a message. His name alone pointed that He is the Savior. Jesus means Savior. God is salvation. God is the Savior. That's the meaning of the word Jesus or Joshua or Yeshua in Greek or Hebrew. And the angel Announcing to Joseph, you shall call his name Jesus. Mao niya ni pangan, ayaw siya pangan ni glain pangan. Jesus, kaya rason, he will save his people from their sins. His name alone is a message. It's a message to us that he's the Savior. And Hebrews supported us. 
Dili nang si Matthew nagsuwat para kanato ang mga ilata nga manuluo si Kristo. The writer of the Hebrews and the main writers, the gospel writers Paul and Peter, nagingon ang Hebrews palita by himself purge our sins. Now, clear naman si Hebrews, established o founded na sa ila nga ang tao magkasasala o nga na ay balaod o nga dapat ang sala mapasay no mo nang mag-sacrifice o binigipayla na si Jesus mo nang perfect sacrifice that's part of our next uh, next description of Jesus He is the Savior of all o yun sa man ni Jesus pag provide meaning purification yun sa man ni Jesus pag purge sa atong sins by going to the cross bearing the judgment of God, taking the place of sinners. He died under God's wrath for our sins. Si Jesus may nagpakamatay para ka na ito, maoy ning ampot, ning sinati, sa silo, sa sala, para ang tao, na mutog mo na wag kaniya, dili na masilutan. 2 Corinthians 5.21 for he, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Christ, who knew no sin, was made to be sin for us. Yang diampun, ang atong sala, ipakasala, sadaan siya. Aron kita makasulob sa iyang pagkamataro. Kung kita anak, if you are in Him, it's clear here that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. Ang tao dili makabato ni ni pagkamataro ni Kristo, pagkamataro sa Dios kung wala siya dihak ni Kristo. Ang tao makabato na ng pagkamataro, majustify, make righteous if he is in Christ, because si Christ lang ang nagpakamatay sa cross para sa kapasayuan sa sala. Now, let's remember, the wages of sin is death. Jesus Christ went to the cross, died our death, took care of the penalty, mauna ang mutuog dawat ka niya, free na, o di na mo experience ni anang death na mo'y silot sa sala. Eternal death. Physical death because this is flesh. Kalistanta, kung bagong lawas, nadilig na madunod. If we'll accept his death and believe that he died for us, it frees us from the penalty of sin. Kaya siya naman, may bihin mo na itong sacrifice para ka na ito. And he did it by himself. It's a wonderful and gracious work of Christ of purging the sin, sins of men. Another verse, Hebrews 7, 27. In contrast to the priest of the Old Testament, who does not need daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifices, first for his own sins, and then for the sins of, for the people, and then for the peoples. For this he did once for all when he offered up himself. Now here, Christ is contrasted to the offerings of the priest. Kung ang priest, panahon sa Old Testament, sa Judaism, mag-offer of sacrifice, before pa sila mo serve sa temple, sila mismo mag-offer of offering para sa ilang sala. Maghimo na sila yung uh, ceremony to cleanse themselves. Usap pa sila makaserve sa temple para mag-offer o sala o dawat o offering para sa ubang tao. Christ does not need that. In under is Hebrews 7.27. Why? Because He's perfect. He's spotless. He's sinless. Then He offered Himself. Kausara po niya He offered. Ang iyang kaugalingon, dili daily. Because 
because he's the perfect sacrifice. In the Old Testament, the priest had to make sacrifice day after day after day. Why Bruno ang pag-sacrifice of priest in the temple? Panahon sa Solomon's temple, ang good. Panahon ni Christ na nagbarog pang temple. Wala yung huno ang pag wag paulag dugo pag pag offer sa mga tao o sacrifices. Ang priest may huno sa pagtrabaho. Rotation is sila pag uh, sa ilang work. But Jesus made the one that did it one time. He was not only the priest, he was also the sacrifice. Si Christ nag-offer Siya ang priest, siya po ang sacrifice. And in that, he purified our sins. Something that the Old Testament cannot do. Hebrews 9. Kung namoy tayo, pasasin niyo, verse 12. Ang tood sa ubus. Now with the blood of goats and calves, but his own, with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of the heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctifies for the purification of our flesh, how much more should the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God? So effective guno pag cleanse, ang blood sa bull or sa goats kung effective na panahon sa Old Testament how much more ang offering ni Christ no without spot ang iyang offering how much more effective that is so verse 26 kung naman tayo Hebrews 9 26 he then would have had to suffer often since the foundation of the world but now once at the end of the ages, he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Kausa lang siya. Sa pag-appear niya, kausa na siya naghimog sacrifice and then it's effective. Even unto this generation and to the next. Jesus Christ dealt with the sin problem. And he had done it. So, in history, Kausa, grammatically, this is also here is Kausa Rapo. Kausa Rapo offers to Christ of sacrifice. And it's perfect. And God the Father received the sacrifice. He approved. And that is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. His sacrifice was accepted. Christ rose again from the dead. And so Christ went to the cross for the penalty of sin. For all who accept sacrifice, who believe in Him, sin is purged, wiped out. That is why Christ is the only Savior. Mama nang exclusive lang yun ng kaluwasan niya ni Cristo. Mama nang Christianity exclusive. Exclusive ra ni Christ. Ang kaluwasan na arad ni Cristo. Kaya si Cristo raman ang nagpakamatay pa sa sana. And then He is also God. He's the priest and he's the offering. It's a tremendous thing that he says here because para sa mga Jews, stumbling block and cross because wala nang hindi silang kadawat sa ilang isaya ay ang cross is a shameful death. It's a cursed death. But to the believer, it's the power of God to salvation. The message of the cross is the power of God to salvation. Jesus came as the perfect sacrifice. You're a sinner, I'm a sinner. Either we pay for our sin or we allow Jesus Christ to pay for it. Decision sa tao. Ikaw ba magsigit bayan? Kung klaro kayo that even the Jews when the Old Testament sacrifices. That's why Christ came to offer the final sacrifice, final and ultimate sacrifice, once and for all. Kausalang upat sa tanan. The 
Bible says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission for sins. And the blood of Jesus Christ will never be applied to you unless by faith you receive Christ in your life. So the basis of salvation is the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Okay, mama kini ang mag-words, yung siyama na mag-words to sin. If you reject Jesus Christ, there is nothing in the universe that can take away your sin. You have time, read Hebrews 10, 26. Kung i-reject pa ni mo si Christ, humanap ka na sa iyo, nakadungog ka si Cristo lang, ang ultimate sacrifice for the sins. Kasi Cristo lang ang maluluwas. Huwag na yung ego pa ang sacrifice na makaluwas ka ni mo, makikuha sa iyo sa lahat. The law said, do this, it demanded man's work, but Christ came and effected by his saving death, man's purification for sin. His message is, trust this, man was urged to believe in Christ's work, not man's work. Lastly, he is exalted above all. the last phrase uh, verse 3 when he had it by himself purged our sins sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high and this majesty on high is God this is God the Father human siya that made of uh, purification when he had by himself purged our sins sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high the right hand is the power side. Jesus took his place at the right hand of God. It's a place of authority. It's a place of honor. Tumot sa iyang pag-submit sa kabubutong samahan na mahimong sin bearer, God highly exalted him. Philippians 2.9 The Father bestowed on him the name above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those who are in heaven and earth and under the earth. And every tongue would confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. God exalted Christ above all, giving him a name that is above every name, making him Lord of all. Now, Right hand, place of authority, a place of honor, if you remember, see, is it on the page so on, you got to the hands of mama, you got to see Christ, Christ, you know, and you got to see the hand, but you got to see the James and John, you got to see the hand, you got to see the hand, you got to see the hand, because the right hand, Ang kilig is a place of authority and honor. And here, Christ is seated at the right hand of God. It's not uh, literally right hand, but it speaks of honor. It speaks of highest authority. Now, another marvelous part of this statement is that he sat down. Tungod kay nag-contradict niya, nag-contrast niya siya sa tanang priest panahon sa Old Testament. Sa sanctuary, sa, sa temple, Solomon's temple, o panahon na nana si Christ, na nagparoon Herod's temple, walay lingkuranan ang mga pari dito sa temple. The priest's work was never finished, so he never sat down. The Old Testament priest, padayon constant ang ilang work, Repeat, because it was only temporarily beneficial. Ang tao, matagkar ng kunya, umatos templo, magharap o covering sa ilang sins, diligyod removal sa sins, only covering. The blood of the bulls, the ghost, the sheep, is only the covering of sins. Are no punishments sa Diyos. Pilip na himuta nga ito kanila. But Christ offering is for the removing of sins. One of purification. Now here, the priest 
Wag yun sila maglingkod, huwag yun sila maglingkod, huwag yun likuranan. But Christ, kuman siya nag-offer o sacrifice, ninglingkod siya. The priest stood because his task was never complete. Only Christ's sacrifice could be eternally effective. He sat down to indicate that the work was finished. Panahon sa cross, dito sa cross, kung sa yan, kung sa sagisyagin, it is finished. Ang ikinahanglan para sa kaluwasan, natapos na. He has done it. It's finished. It was done. It was accomplished. Kung sa idiling ma-accomplish sa Old Testament sacrifice, was accomplished once by Jesus Christ for all time. Panahon sa Old Testament, kadaka, why who know about sacrifice, but si Christ, nag-offer ka ko sa pagkahuman ni Lincoln, nag-speak, nahuman na, ang bayad sa sala. Igo na ang iyang pag-sacrifice, ang kausa niyang sacrifice, because it's the perfect sacrifice. And it's for all time. Now, another, there are at least four mga tagyuntunan kini pagingon nga he sat down uh, on the right hand of the Majesty on high. Let's just uh, take this first. He sat down, number one, reason, as a sign of honor at ang nagingon ka ganina. Because it's a place of honor, it's a place of authority. To be seated to the right hand of the Father is an honor. He sat down, secondly, as a sign of rule. And as 1 Peter 3, to rule. Yeah. 22. Who has gone into heaven is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. 1 Peter 3, 22. He sat down on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. That's rule. He sat down as a ruler. Then third, he sat down to rest. And as Hebrews will go that uh, some other next time, Hebrews 10, chapter 13. He sat down to rest. His work was done. His mission was accomplished. He made purification of sins once and is for all time. And now the Nakinahatlan, Maksikishak offer, because the offer was perfect, sacrificed, and accepted by God. Then, fourth, he sat down to intercede for us. Romans 8, 34. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us. It means he is our mediator to the Father. He is our priest, he is our high priest to the Father. Father, now come on up, ako na nangyipo kamad yan. Jesus is praying for us to the Father. He is seated at the right hand, making intercession for us. Now, mo'n yung picture ni Jesus Christ. At ang nakita ang iyang pagka-supreme above all, in all his offices. At ang nakita ang iyang pagka-prophet, is the final revelation of God. At ang nakita ang iyang pagka-priest, o kung niya ang iyang pag-rule, iyang pagka-king. Tingali ang atong vision ni Christ is limited. We are in danger of confining Him sa atong limited or restricted experience or knowledge of Him. That's why we need to be reminded always, we need to see the vision of Christ sa manining verses 1 to 4 sa Hebrews or 1 to 3 sa Hebrews. He is majestic. He is above all. Christ supreme. You've seen him as king, controlling, sustaining, and seated in the throne. This is our Lord Jesus Christ. is a fool, for God says that he is supreme in all things. For those who have placed their trust in Christ, for those who affirm the statement made in verses 1 to 3, I would ask you this question. If you claim to serve Jesus Christ as the unique Son of God, 
Do our lives demonstrate it. Kung wala pa kao kalugtungan ni Christ, it's time for you to realize that Christ is supreme of all. O angayan, o takos ni simbang, o siya lang, ang makaluwas, o makapasayo sa atin mga sarap. Ang murajek ka niya, makapasayuan pa sa sarap. Virgin, naging mo, ako lang yung re-phrase. Kung si Christ, dili ni mo everything. Kung si Christ, dili ni mo tibu, partial lang sa inyo. Then he is nothing to you. I hope you will accept Christ as your Lord. Because one day, he will be more than one. That's true. Father, thank you so much for revealing yourself unto us through our Lord Jesus Christ. How majestic you are, Lord Jesus. To thank you for making your application of our sins. Thank you for accepting us in the blessings and that you will sustain us. Thank you for your great work and your mercy and grace. Lord, help us to be worthy of your calling and help us also to speak your truth and to live your truth and to share your truth. We glory from in Jesus' name. Amen.